I wanted to share a few reasons about why I feel that, that Topaz Photo AI is better at sharpening than what I can do in Adobe. I've done a few Topaz videos uh, recently, and this is one that I've gotten a lot of questions on, which is you know where the differences are when it comes to sharpening. Um, so we're gonna talk about a few reasons in this video I think if I can come from the standpoint of it, because I think it sounds like I'm being very negative toward Adobe, and, and I'm not. I think Lightroom and Photoshop combination, best software package in the world for photographers, hands down, okay? If we were to take the top 10 most important things that a photographer would do to their photos, I think uh, Lightroom and Photoshop would be everybody about seven to eight of them, okay? But sharpening just isn't one of them. And that's why I wanted to share a little bit about the sharpening workflow and what some of the reasons are why I turn uh, to Topaz Photo AI for some of those sharpening needs. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing, so uh, I can't save you any money. Topaz does, uh, depending on when you're watching this, holiday sales are going on. It's pretty, probably a pretty good time to buy it. Uh, so I can't save you any money. I do get a small commission if you use my link. It doesn't cost you a penny. Um, and I will also provide you with a PDF keyboard shortcut guide for photo AI. So I put a link in the description there. So if you're interested in checking out Topaz and then you think it's something that you can use, please use that link and uh, you can also go there and fill out the form to get the PDF. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, all right, the, all right, let's go ahead and get started here. Now, the first reason, and, and I'm almost gonna cover the biggest reason first, which is it, it's just mostly better. Remember, I, I've often said if I'm using Topaz, it's a problematic photo, okay? If I've got a perfectly sharp photo without a lot of noise in it, even if it's got moderate noise, I'm, I'm happy to use Adobe. These, This is for my problematic photos where I need the absolute best, um, the absolute best results from that. So I think it's important to recognize in your workflow that not every photo is gonna fall into that category here. But it just, the noise or the, the sharpening is just better. Now I've opened up the raw photo here, which is generally what I'm going to do when I want when I want the best quality out of Topaz. Um, and in that case, it already does a little bit of raw denoising, which it, this photo didn't really need that much of it. But you can see here the sharpening, if I move that that slider back and forth here, the, the sharpening is just better than what I'm going to get in the Adobe world. You can take a look at this brick wall here and that kind of gives you a good, a good indication of uh, the sharpening level we're gonna get there. Uh, I'm not gonna do much denoising to the photo because that's already done with the, the denoise step in there, but you get a, a bunch of different sharpening algorithms in there and we'll, we'll take a look at a couple others uh, as we go through some examples here. But I'm just getting better better sharpening than I can get in the Adobe world. So let's let's go jump over into the Adobe world and, and I'll, I'll kind of give you an idea of, of what I'm using to, to evaluate that. But here's a photo, I'll go under the detail panel here. And uh, the sharpening slider is, is literally, think of it as the volume slider. It's essentially finding edges and, and adding contrast to those edges. Uh, the radius is how far outside of those edges do we wanna go to look. And depending on the photo, you're gonna use different radiuses. So there's no one size fits all to this, but uh, if for a photo with a lot of small, minute details like this, I'm generally gonna use a smaller radius. And then detail is essentially how much of that contrast is it gonna to start to add to those, those edges in there. But it also does add these little wormy bits of noise in there. And that's where we have masking to follow it up and try to remove it from that. But then you get these weird edges uh, that you can see here along some of the, the more contrasty edges. You get that weird, these little weird artifacts along some of the edges. So you can't just crank up your masking like I did here. You'd really have to pull back on your detail. You'd have to pull back on your overall sharpening. And when you look at the before of sharpening here, and then the after, it's just, it, it's a very, very subtle change that I'm not able to get inside of my raw editors here, which again, if I flip back over here, you can see I'm able to get a pretty noticeable change. I stacked a couple of them on top of each other. I even did some extra sharpening. I even tried some unsharp mask on that. But again, we'll go down to, we'll just take a look at a wall here as an example. Uh, so this is the Topaz version. Um, this is the alignment slightly off and how I, I move them into the, the image here, but this is just Lightroom only. And then this is me adding a little bit of Smart Sharpen on top of that inside of Photoshop. And then again, this is the, the Topaz version. So we'll just go with the one that's added a little bit of Lightroom sharpening and a little bit of Smart Sharpening on top of it. That's the Adobe way. 
this is the Topaz way. So the Adobe way and the Topaz way. Again, I, I personally think that the Topaz way is better. And I know everybody differs in these things and everybody sees details a little bit differently. Let's go look off in the corner of the photo here. This is a perfect time for a very quick word from our sponsor, which is always me. Uh, if you are in the market, if you're considering Topaz or if you've already purchased it and you don't feel you're getting what you need out of your investment because Photo AI has really grown and matured as a product from what it originally came out to be. It used to be very few, very small amounts of settings and now there's, there's plenty that we can do in it. I created a course called uh, the Topaz Photo AI and Adobe Workflow course to show you how to integrate these things into your Adobe workflow because there's different places to use a plugin in Adobe workflow and I think it's important number one to know the settings in photo AI know what they do know how you can best get into the programs um, but also how to best include that into your Adobe workflow so we talk about everything in photo AI talk about the Adobe workflow batch processing even some tips and things for restoring uh, photos because photo AI does have some tools for that so uh, the course is on sale right now very very easy course to get through very very good price for it so I hope you'll swing by and find out a little bit more I know everybody sees things a little bit differently so for most people I think and anybody that I would share this photo with they're they're going to agree that the the topaz way it is a better sharpening when it comes to my landscape, when it comes to my wildlife, when it comes to my travel photos that I'm able to get uh, with that topaz sharpening. Now, thing number two, reason number two is blurry photos. And this doesn't happen for me a lot, but I know it does happen every once in a while. And I know that it happens, the, the people that, that follow my tutorials write into me and tell me that it happens. But you can see here, we've got just a soft photo. Okay, this is motion blur. This is this is blur from not using a fast enough shutter speed. It's not out of focus because it missed focus. This is motion blur. Okay, you can see some of the motion blur along the beak there and you can just tell it looks like it's moving. Okay, Adobe doesn't have anything to address this. You're, you're not even going to get close in the Adobe world to what we can do here. But again, I opened up the sharpening and it just used standard sharpening, all right? So if you take a look at the, the before and after there. So if you do have a photo, do, does it look perfect? No, I never think a motion blurred photo when it's sharpened looks perfect. But in a lot of cases, it looks good enough. And if you didn't have to share the photo quite so zoomed in, this just looks soft to me where this looks very, very passable. As, again, as long as you're not gonna let anybody really zoom into it, um, I think it, it actually looks very passable and does a much better job than, than anything I could get inside of Adobe. But the other thing is, and this is just more something to watch out for, um, is Topaz has this thing called Super Focus Beta. Essentially what it is, it, it's, it's called beta. So it's what Adobe does you know, when they have their technology previews or they release a Photoshop beta. It's not, it's not in prime time yet, but essentially I'm just gonna give a, a rendered preview area because it does take some time to go in there and render this. And that's why it's not really prime time yet because it just takes a little bit too, too long in my opinion to use. But through the power of video post-production, what just took me about a minute, probably only took a few seconds for you. Um, this, is, this, is, this is pretty interesting to see where it's going. Again, there's some settings over here where you can change the sharpening strength and whatnot, but to take a, a motion blurred photo, I'll turn it off. That's before, that's after. To take a motion blurred photo and get that kind of result from it is pretty extraordinary and something that, that unfortunately we can't even come close to touching uh, inside of that Adobe world. Okay, so as I said, it is it is a little bit slow. It's called beta for a reason, and that could probably be it. So it's not something that I'm thinking is prime time yet, but uh, it's interesting to see where that technology is going. And if you do have a photo and you've got a little bit of extra time to wait, then it is very, very usable. You just might have to wait a few minutes for it to take effect. And then the last thing here is a lot of times when I'm sharpening, sometimes with my landscape and travel, more often with my wildlife photos, and you can see I've opened this one here, I've opened up the raw, so it's done some denoising, then it's done some sharpening. One of the things that Topaz will let you do is under auto selection, you can choose certain selection objects here. So subject is one of them. And then it did a pretty good job. Now I'll call, I'll call fault where, where I can call it, and that it, it doesn't always work this good. All right, there's plenty of times where 
I feel like I've got a pretty clearly defined subject and it doesn't recognize it. In that case, if I only wanted to sharpen that area in Topaz, I've got an option under edit selection and I've got a brush to go in there and you know paint in and paint out certain parts of the photo if I, if I want to do that. And then the alternative is most likely what I would do is probably bring those into Photoshop where I have far superior uh, masking capabilities than, than anything out there. So if I really need complex masking, then I'm probably bringing it into Photoshop. But I will say probably 30% of the time, this keeps me from having to go into Photoshop to do that masking because the subject detection works well enough that I'm able to just sharpen the subject. There's no reason to sharpen this background. Okay, this background is blurry. It's supposed to be soft. It's supposed to be out of focus. So I wouldn't want any sharpening happen to enhance the details back here. So in this case, I only do want to sharpen the subject. And this gives me a good fast way of doing that. Um, so as we finish up here, I know I know it might sound to the surface. I'm, I'm being negative toward Adobe. I'm really not. As I said earlier, I believe if you take the top 10 things, uh, Adobe Adobe will, will be everybody on, on probably seven to eight of those things. I just don't feel like sharpening is one of those things. And, and I make it very, very known. I was out there a couple of weeks ago. I was in meetings for two days and, and there's not a person at Adobe that could not say that when we were in a meeting, uh, I, was, I was constantly asking for better sharpening. So never know where things will go, but for now, this is uh, the workflow that I'm using when I do want to sharpen my photos. As I said earlier, uh, Topaz software, if you do consider purchasing it, I would always ask if you could use that link. I do get a small commission, but I will also send you a PDF. So you can check the description for that link. And if you do end up purchasing Topaz software and you find uh, you're not getting as much out of your investment, maybe it's a little bit too confusing and trying to incorporate it into an Adobe workflow, I hope you'll swing by to find out a little bit more about my course. Lastly, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about plugin workflow, uh, I've got another video here for you right here. It actually shows some of the different ways that we can use plugins, not just Topaz, although I think I do use it as an example most of the time, but just plugins in general. If you've got other plugins and you're not sure the best ways to use that and to get into those plugins from an Adobe workflow, it's a great place to go to next.